David here with Big Boot on Pens, back again with another ink review. Today I have for you the latest release from Colorverse, and that would be the Butterfly Nebula and the NGC 6302. That last ink doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue, but as you will see, it's a rather nice ink. Thanks go out to the good folks at Luxury Brands, the U.S. distributors for Colorverse, for providing this ink for review. Uh, it was nice to see the Gillett family at the DC show last month. Uh, the Gillets are the folks behind luxury brands. Uh, it's been nice starting to get back to shows and catching up with the folks that I haven't been able to see in person for the last couple of years. Uh, in regard to this latest release from Colorverse, the August edition of Penworld magazine, uh, these inks were featured on the cover, and it was the very first time in history of the magazine that they've put an ink on the cover. So that was nice. Uh, the inspiration for many Colorverse inks is science and space exploration. Uh, lately, space exploration has been in the news a lot due to the amazing high-resolution pictures being sent back to Earth from the James Webb Telescope, showing us some of the, the far reaches of outer space. Uh, just a couple of days ago, NASA released this picture of what they're calling a space tarantula, which contains thousands of never-before-seen young stars that were previously not visible due to cosmic dust. Here's a picture taken by the Hubble Telescope of NGC 6302. NGC stands for New General Catalog, and 6302 is its entry number in that catalog for this celestial body. Uh, it's just the technical identification number, but it's more commonly known as the Butterfly Nebula. Uh, it's within the Milky Way galaxy, roughly 3,800 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Scorpius. Uh, a nebula is an enormous cloud of dust and gas that uh, you know, occupies the space between stars and acts as a nursery for new stars. Uh, this one here is about two light years wide. The dramatic expulsion of material into space is happening at speeds at over a million miles an hour. The way it expands out makes it look a lot like a butterfly, hence the name. Okay, enough background. Let's take a look at these two inks, and in order to do so, please join me over here at camera two. So, here we have a look at the Colorverse Butterfly Nebula and then the NG6302. Uh, I know it just barely fits in the screen here, but these are the Colorverse boxes. They've always had some really neat boxes, uh, and I have noticed uh, some change. Uh, they used to have a little package in here that had some stickers and some other things, but I think they've done away with that, uh, which is fine because I thought it was something that was cool to include, but I really never used anything that was inside there. But there's lots of interesting little space-themed things here. And inside we have the two bottles of ink. Let me get this out of the way. We have the Butterfly Nebula, uh, which is a glistening ink. And then we have the NGC 6302, which isn't uh, glistening, it's a, more of a straight ink. I will say that the particles that are in this particular ink, uh, I find them to be rather heavy. And what I mean by that is you can shake it up. Let me shake it up. It takes a little bit of time to shake up. But once you shake it up, um, it doesn't take long for those particles to then gather back down at the bottom. So it is something that um, other times it might take a little bit longer for them to settle at the bottom, but I believe that these particles are just, they seem a little bit heavier so that uh, you need to ink this up a little bit sooner after uh, shaking up than later. So this is what the Butterfly Nebula looks like. Um, you can see that it's just a very light blue uh, and that it does have a bit of kind of silver shimmer to it uh, and then a little bit of darker blue shading. You know, I, I don't necessarily find myself using the super light ink like that on a great, a great deal. Um, it's somewhat similar to like a Ferris wheel press blue cotton candy. You know, I don't have a lot of inks that are similar to that just because it's not something I typically care for. Um, here's another Ferris wheel press ink. This is their storied blue. Um, and then here's something that's a little bit darker, which is the Diamine Eau de Nil. 
This is the NGC 6302. Um, it's still a bit on the light side, but it's kind of a, a lighter green, uh, but it is a little bit darker. Uh, this It's very similar to something like the Venta Mermaid. Uh, this is what it looks like with the Laban Poseidon green. Um, it's a little bit darker than Noodler's, Noodler's St. Patty's. And again, it's darker than this Ferris Wheel Press Sweet Honeydew. This is what the inks look like on some 52 gram Tomoe River paper. This is with a Q-tip and this is more of a swab. You can see here that uh, when you get a lot of it on here, then you can see that shimmer that comes out there in the sheen. Um, this is what the NGC looks like. Uh, and then you can see here with the, uh, with the eye drops where it was a very heavy application that that uh, sheening and shading really come through there and the sparkle. Actually, it can come off on your hand. So uh, it does wipe off. So you need to be careful with that. Uh, but you can see it's significantly darker when you have a significantly higher concentration of the ink. So in regard to these two inks, the Butterfly Nebula is just too light for my personal taste. It's not something I would typically use. So for the sake of this review, I decided to focus on the NGC 6302. Um, that uh, this is with some Rhodia 80 gram paper. The top here, I ended up doing with a uh, 3.8 millimeter Pilot Parallel. I find that the ghosting and bleed is low on this particular ink. Uh, and the shade is, I say, medium to low. And for this one, I'd say that the sheen is low as well. Uh, in regard to the pens that I'm using for this particular review, um, the first one is a pen from Monty Winfield and is called the High Water and has a really nice fine nib. So this is the Monty Winfield. the high water. And that's a fine nib. Then next up, we have a pen from Kasama, and this is their Una. And this one has a medium nib. So this is the Kasama. I'm sorry, this one has a me, yeah, this one has a medium nib. And I will say that the Monty Winfield, it is coming off a little bit darker in there. I was beginning to think that might have been some uh, some ink from an old uh, filling here, uh, but it is a little bit darker than some of the other applications you'll see here. And then finally, for a broad nib, we have one of my favorite pens, which is this Kilk Celestial. And I figured since it was a space-themed ink that a, uh, a pen named Celestial would be appropriate. And so this is the Kilk Celestial. And this is a broad nib. So, in regard to the writing sample, we'll start with the Monty Winfield. I said NGC 6302 is known by many names, uh, the Bug Nebula, the Butterfly Nebula, or even Caldwell 69. Uh, Caldwell is a catalog of 109 star clusters, nebulas, and galaxies. In regard to the Kasama,
said here that it is in a bipolar planetary nebula in the constellation Scorpius, which is Latin for scorpion. Uh, it's interesting, where I grew up in uh, San Diego in a place called Mara Mesa, all of the streets around where I lived were named after constellations. Uh, Scorpius was a street that was uh, a couple of blocks away from me. Uh, I grew up on Arcturus Way, but you can see all of the, or the, most, the majority of the, uh, the streets where I grew up were all named for constellations. And then finally, for the Kilk... I said that it is predicted our middle-aged sun will exhaust its fuel and turn into a nebula in approximately 5 billion years. So make sure to set a reminder on your calendar for that. You wouldn't want that to sneak up on you. Um, I would say that the flow on this particular ink is medium. In regard to drying time, it was between 15 and 30 seconds. Um, let's go ahead and put some water on here for a water test. And while that is going on, we'll take a look at the chromatography for these two particular inks. I found that both of them ended up looking fairly similar to one another with some slight differences. This is what the chromatography ended up looking like. Uh, this one here was for the Butterfly Nebula. And then this one here, the top one uh, with a little bit darker blue and the darker green is the uh, NGC 6302. And then in regard to the water test, this doesn't profess to be a waterproof ink. Um, it handled okay. It seems like the paper is uh, uh, deteriorating more than the ink is. And then as conclusion, I said that this Colorverse pairing is uh, lighter than my personal tastes, uh, but this ink also behaves very well. So there you have the Colorverse NGC 6302, um, as well as the Butterfly Nebula. If you're looking for some lighter inks, uh, then this is definitely something to consider, and Colorverse always has some really nice products. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.